With COVID-19 making headlines around the world, many people are uncertain about a lot of things, including their finances. And of course, your health should absolutely come first. Um, but maintaining some sort of financial health as well uh, during this situation could be critically important. Um, and so with a solid ha a handle on your finances, you'd be able to better prepare for whatever life throws your way in the next coming weeks and months, especially when, you know, we don't really know how long things are going to be in this sort of state of limbo. So our finances uh, hopefully shouldn't have to suffer that much if we begin putting things in place, if you have already been putting things in place, and if we just think strategically about what we have. With me here on the show, we have Dennis Waweru, who's a finance audit and risk consultant to help us better plan and also answer some of your financial questions that you may be having during this time. So Karibu Sun to the show, Dennis. It's good to have you here. Thank you so much, Joyce. And of course, as we've been seeing organizations, world economies, you know, even the biggest names as far as global economies are concerned, really, really having a rough time yeah. uh, in this season. And that has, of course, affected revenues all over the place. Um, salary re reductions, layoffs, closures of businesses, even in some cases, most of us are asking what's next, right? How do we then navigate um, life as we know it? Um, and how do I manage to live with what I now I'm getting? Yeah, thank you so much, Joyce. Um, actually, it's true. And for most organizations, the ones that are reacting, the way they are reacting is because they are trying to stay afloat. And you can't really blame them. But then what does it really mean for their employees and for the individual? Mm -hmm. um, you realize that most of these people, um, they either fall in two buckets. So you have either received communication from your employer or uh, your organization telling you uh, the next steps. Is either it's a, pay or it's a pay cut, uh, reduction in salary or whatever. And for that group of individuals that have already received uh, communication, you can say that at least they have some level of certainty when it comes to their income. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there is this other group of uh, uh, people that their employers are continuing a business as usual. And for them, I say it's a little bit uh, risky mm. because they don't know what next. Right. Because again, uh, you don't know how to plan properly because yeah you've not been told by your boss or your supervisor or your employer what is affecting the company as right. it is right now. So you don't know if they're just going to close shop tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then you, you, of course, you know there are those employers that will just give you one paycheck mm. and tell you today is your final day. Mm. And you want to avoid that because uh, dealing with uncertainty is the one that brings a lot of fear for most individuals. Okay. So I would implore that most of these individuals, if your employer hasn't said anything, just go back to your employer and have that candid conversation. Yeah. Understand what next. Yeah. Understand what is happening to the organization. What is happening to the industry around your organization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, We've talked a lot about finance on this show and yep. just personal, you know, management of your finances. So I certainly hope that a lot of you are paying attention to that and really trying to implement it. I feel like we're at a situation where this is like a, a whole world life lesson, right? Like yeah. we've been hearing about savings, 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 yes. emergency fund. And now it's like, oh, <laughs> that's what it was yes. for, right? Um, but I'm curious as to what your take is as far as is this the time to start pulling out those savings or should we as best as possible even with reduced salaries should one still be trying to save or how then do we handle this savings discussion do you pull out your savings and try and keep your lifestyle where it was or should you just completely readjust everything okay um, thank you so much again uh, that that question is very relevant and i actually get it from so many people mm. they ask me what do i do okay because now i have a reduced paycheck and what do i do but what i advise people is before you go to your savings before you start spending on your savings look at whatever you have right now if it's a pay cut how much of the pay cut is it if it's uh, let's say 50 percent can you adjust your expenses again to meet that pay cut mm. then uh, what what then you really need to do is to look at your budget and a practical example is just take a piece of paper and write down all your budget items. So this is a mon monthly budget. Once you write down all these items, make sure that they are detailed and there is a figure, an approximate figure, an estimation mm -hmm. next to that figure. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing is you ask yourself, um, 
among these budget items, all of them, what is a need and what is a want. Mm. Then, uh, and a rule of thumb is to ask yourself, uh, for this particular item, what would happen if I stayed without it for a whole month? Right. If you can stay without it for a whole month, then just write a want, that is a want. Mm. But if you really need it for the entire month, then it becomes a need, for example, rent, mm -hmm. uh, maybe food. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, when we talk about needs and wants, uh, it takes me back to primary school when they told us uh, the three basic needs, Joyce, you remember them? Mm -hmm. So we had food, shelter, and uh, clothing. Mm -hmm. So basically, you, your life revolves around those uh, three items. Mm -hmm. But then when it comes to clothing again, you, you might want to reconsider it, because if your closet is full, yeah. then it actually becomes a want. You just want an extra piece, right. because you're not clothing clothing yourself, you're not walking out naked, you know? Yeah. So at this time, uh, just n you manage your expenses from that perspective. We should have been told food, clothing, and health care. And health care. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. Yeah, actually, health care is there because, mm -hmm. I mean, especially for those people with chronic diseases, mm -hmm. those people who need medication, yeah. it's important that they just seek medication or yeah. get the, uh, medicine, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so okay. uh, back back to my list. Mm -hmm. uh, once you have done that list, what uh, you need to do is to eliminate all the ones and rewrite that list again. Yeah. Then you will find that you have a lean budget, yeah. which is now uh, comprising of needs only. Mm -hmm. Then see how that can fit to your uh, new or revised income. Okay, yeah. that's a great exercise too, that you write down all of your different spending, the items that you spend on. Um, and then if you cannot live with it, for a month, or if you can live it, with it, you know, with... Yeah, if you can avoid it for a month. If you can avoid it for a month. It's a want. It is a want. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Hey, because there are many things we convince ourselves yes, we need. Yes, but, yes. you know, if you don't need it for a whole month, then that is, is actually a, yeah. a want. Very important. So, really, none of us can be affording to to live life the way we were before, yes, right? Like yes. something has got to give. There have to, there has to be adjustments that are made um, for us to really be able to tide over well um, during this time. Yeah. All right. Well, we want to take a couple questions here, uh, and one of them is, how can I make ends meet if I genuinely don't have the money to do it? That's a tough question. Yeah. It's a really tough question, but then it depends on on each person their level of uh, uh the, their level at which they don't have the money to do it mm. because think about it from this perspective uh joyce um you have a skill set maybe you don't have money because you were fired mm -hmm. or because uh, you've been put on unpaid leave or something but maybe you have a skill set look around your environment and look around yourself mm -hmm. and ask yourself what can i do with this skill set right now mm -hmm. that can earn me a coin or two mm -hmm. okay so people need to be candid and honest with themselves don't stick to that white collar job just because that is what you know how to do to do best mm -hmm. uh one of the and I'm, no, I, want, I don't want to call it an advantage, but one of the things that this COVID-19 will teach many people is to adapt, mm. okay? So it, it will take peop most people out of their cocoon. It will take most people out of their safe space, and the, it will make people adapt. And uh, that is one of the things that I've encouraged. But then if you push to the wall and push comes to shove, um, look around yourself also and ask, uh, do I have family and friends that I can rely on? Yeah. yeah. Do I have um, savings? Back to the initial question. Maybe I can go back and tap into my savings. Mm -hmm. Do I have maybe an asset or two I can, I can dispose that I don't really need right now, but then I can dispose. But don't be quick and don't rush to consume your savings or, or dispose your assets unless it is extremely mm -hmm. necessary. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and uh, it's good you've brought up, you know, figuring out what you, skill sets you have and yeah. trying to utilize those. Uh, because someone here was asking, you know, many people are now using their money to pay for food and just their day-to-day -day costs. Um, and so what are some of the ways that someone, is there a way someone could possibly make some money during this season and during this time period? And you've certainly there highlighted um, to, to really think about our skill sets. Yes. And I think as you're saying also, in addition to adapting part of what this whole COVID-19 season is going to be doing for us is just opening up the online space for us. Yeah. Right. So previously, maybe you thought, you know, we have to have a physical brick and mortar store, but now we're understanding, oh, OK, I can actually do this, you know, from from my home. Yeah, remotely. Remotely. And yeah, that, that's correct. Um, also, it's good that you mentioned actually online space. Um, if you're working from home, it means you also get a little bit more time. 
because uh, you can actually complete the task that you are assigned by your boss, mm -hmm. maybe b by afternoon, and then you have the rest of the afternoon. So use that time to either improve your skill set mm -hmm or to do a side hustle. Mm. And uh, the good thing is that the world is moving online right now. So you will always find something to do online. Yeah. yeah? yeah. So it, I just encourage most people to do, to do that, especially improving their skill set. Yeah. It might not earn you the income that you want right now, mm. but it might give you something to sustain you. Yeah. And then in future, or a year from now, or two years from now, you'll actually find that you, you love, it's, it's your passion. You actually love it more than mm. your main thing. Mm. Yeah. And that's a great point to highlight because the truth is there are people who are lali <laughs> they're not sleeping right now right yeah. they they'll go to work with the few hours they'll have left they'll maybe try and do a side hustle or they'll go and learn a certain skill set yes. so i think there's there's an important thing to emphasize there as far as make the most of this time yes. this is a time like no other like i don't no think we, i mean yeah. god God forbid, we will ever be in a season like this one where people have this much time on their hands. Yes. So really ask yourself, are you using this time wisely? wisely yes. Very, very important. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I understand you've previously spoken about six steps for us to be able to organize our finances. Mm -hmm. um, would you mind uh, elaborating on some of those for us here? Okay. So the first thing is to um, establish your income or just to project your income. And I, um, it's, a, it's an important thing because these are uncertain times. So it's good to know how much can you earn. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was saying if your boss hasn't communicated to you, it's good that you go and talk to your boss. Mm -hmm. Ask them how is the organization doing. And one joke I usually say is that finance people are usually lucky because they get to know the status of the company. Mm -hmm. They are close to their accounts. They will see there is no money, there is no money. Mm -hmm. So they are able to adjust themselves. But for the rest of the organizations, it's really hard because if your boss is behaving as uh, things usual, then there is not much you can do. So we should be concerned about that. You should actually be concerned. Talk to your boss. Uh, have that candid conversation. Understand what what is the future of your organization in the next three months. Mm -hmm. How is it going to be affected by by the economy? Uh, the way the economy is reacting to the yeah. COVID-19 right. pandemic. Because, and, and it's a realistic thing to do because really there's no industry that is not affected at this point, right? Yes, Unless yes. you're maybe a supermarket or like a, you sell hand sanitizer. But even that is waning. They're off, also being affected right? because yeah. yeah, because of the curfew. You know, yeah. you, you can't say you're not being affected. You look at look at even the um, this fish, uh, mama, mm -hmm. these ladies who are selling fish. Mm -hmm. They were complaining and saying that most of the time that most of their customers come from 7 p.m. Mm. But the curfew starts at 7 p.m. Mm. So you see also it's, a, it's, it's an opportunity for people to adapt. Yeah. It's, for, it's an opportunity for people to adapt. Mm -hmm. There is a, maybe a guy who used to walk around with coffee at night selling or someone in Kencom selling uh, roasted maize. Yeah. But what, what they can't do it now yeah. at night. Yeah. Or so airtime. What work on your body so you don't have exactly. as much foot traffic. Yes. So yeah. it's time that you start adapting. Yeah. Right, right. Then this period will also teach people to adapt so that they can increase their income mm -hmm. or sustain themselves. Mm. And the, uh, sorry? No, it's okay. Go ahead. I mean, I'll ask yeah, so the other thing is I uh, talked about the budget yeah. and just making sure that your budget is lean. So once you have the needs on one side, mm. see how can you squeeze on these budget items. Yeah. Mm. So that at least when you squeeze on these budget items, you get a very lean budget that, cuts, that can actually sustain you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I was just thinking, you know, as far as you're saying, you know, even with every industry being affected and if your boss hasn't spoken to you just yet, if you have a job, should you start preempting like and trying to consider what are some of the different markets, you know, averages or as far as pay cuts and how far those have gone? Should you start before you even told you're going to get at this X percent? pay cut should you also start jipangaing and just project your do your own projections for okay in the eventuality that you know i have to go through a pay cut if it's this percentage you start working out your budget already is that something you'd recommend um what i recommend uh, is for everyone to look at the industry mm. that you're working in mm -hmm. so for example if you're in a manufacturing industry 
look at other companies how are they treating their employees mm -hmm. because uh, certainly if other companies are giving their employees pay cuts there's a very high probability that, that you your company would. might might also do that yeah. yeah if people are being laid off then there's a high probability that your organization might lay you off mm -hmm. and then that will spark the need to actually even go and talk to your boss mm -hmm. and have that candid conversation but if you can't really have that conversation with your boss um, just assume the worst and work from the worst perspective okay. but also that I'm not encouraging people to have fear yeah. they, there's no there's no uh, benefit in working from a fear perspective mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so rather than having it be a fearful thing for you yes. think of it as you are planning ahead uh, yes. right you are adapting I yes, think that's the adapting. key word yeah because fear is saying I want to stick to what I had and you're refusing to adapt and yeah you're going to get overtaken by the you yes. know the, the tide of events so um, I, I think part of what I'm hearing from you is just to to be flexible to the times that we're in and and to really be at a point where you can be malleable in the sense that you can you can adjust right yes. that is a yes. huge skill for yeah. all of us yeah. to literally be learning during this time dennis i want to thank you very much for your time thank and you, for coming on to the show today and just sharing these insights with us yes. here today if people want to follow you or maybe you have some other insights you share i don't know if you share them on social media can they do so yeah, but you can just they can just write me an email. Okay. Yeah, uh, just Dennis at fba.co.ke. All right. Yes, that's Dennis at fba. Yes. Okay. That's a Dennis with a single n mm -hmm. at fba.co.ke. Just right. drop me an email with the questions that they have, and I'll, sh I'll answer them. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, Dennis. Yeah. Uh, we do appreciate you. Tomorrow we'll be joined by another Dennis. You met him last week. He's a 24-year-old trying to lose a hundred kgs. He's gonna be back here on set working out um, for our fitness segment we're also going to be bringing you some relationship advice as well as our you know prayer and devotions as we do every morning and that will be coming your way tomorrow but for now thank you so much for your company here today and for joining me i do appreciate you let's meet here again tomorrow for even more full circle with joyce until then god bless you stay safe i'll see you soon ciao